Episodes of Pellet Swap are suggested by viewers like you. If there's a character you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comment section down below. Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Pellet Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. And by your favorite fighting games, I mean my favorite fighting games, and by my favorite fighting games, I mean Soul Calibur. Today, we're looking at the Frenching Fenceman, I mean Fencing Frenchman, Raphael Sorel. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Raphael is and what we should be looking for in his character designs. Raphael was born into the noble Sorel family. As such, he received a robust education that included politics, medicine, dance, apparently, and his favorite subject, swordsmanship. But his privileged life came crumbling down when, depending on which timeline we're looking at, he killed another nobleman in self-defense, or he got framed for an attempt on King Henry III's life. Either way, he was branded an outlaw, and even his own family was quick to turn against him. One day, while he was hiding from some guards, a street urchin named Amy lied about which way he went. This was the first genuine act of kindness he had ever received, and he became obsessed with paying it back and then some. So, he adopted Amy, smuggled her to Spain, taught her how to defend herself, smuggled her back to France, ingratiated himself to an old rich guy, poisoned the old rich guy, inherited the old rich guy's fortune, used it to pay for Amy's education, hired a bunch of maids to serve for every need, went off in search of the cursed sword soul edge and or the holy sword soul caliber in order to reforge the world into a perfect utopia, and also became a vampire at some point. <sighs> The tragic irony is that all Amy wants is to spend time with her dad, and as he spirals further into obsession, that may be the one thing he can never give her. Raphael Soul Calibur 2 1P is one of his simpler designs, which is really saying something. It focuses more on the duelist side of his character than the aristocrat side, which sets it apart from his future One Ps. His clothes do have plenty of ornate decorations, such as the gold accents on his shirt and boots and the sash hanging from his waist, but for the most part, it's a form fitting and practical outfit. On his back is a family crest depicting two lions and a sword, which is a neat detail that communicates his noble background. Unfortunately, you can barely see it in-game. I'd prefer it to be a different color from the rest of his jacket. Speaking of color, his palette is appropriately regal, but it's lacking in value contrast. Some splashes of white would break up all the red, purple, and brown. 6 out of 10. His 2P is grounded in Renaissance-era fashion. Slashed sleeves such as these were all the rage in 16th century Europe, and they make his silhouette more unique by virtue of their poofiness. His tall boots, cuffed gloves, and goatee call to mind a musketeer, which is an archetype that has a lot of overlap with Raphael. His pelvis is sharp and feels distinct from his 1P despite using a lot of the same colors. This costume has some similar vibes to Siegfried's Soul Calibur 3 2P, which is maybe my favorite costume in the whole series, so it should come as no surprise that I like this one as well. 9 out of 10. His 3P is the fanciest of them all, due in large part to his spats and cravat. Like his other costumes, it's mostly symmetrical, which makes him seem sophisticated and orderly, but he's only wearing a glove on his dominant left hand, which mirrors real-world fencing gear. The rapier is strictly a one-handed weapon, and the fencer's offhand is generally kept on the hip, behind the back, or up in the air, out of harm's way. Therefore, it doesn't require the grip or protection provided by a glove. Once again, his palette feels distinct from his 1P despite using a lot of the same colors. I like this costume, but it's kind of underwhelming for a 3P. It doesn't even change his hair or facial hair like his 2P does. 7 out of 10. In Soul Calibur 3, Raphael has begun his descent into vampirism. He's not biting necks and threatening to turn people into his minions yet, but his eyes are orange and his skin and hair are paler. This transformation was and still is controversial among Soul Calibur fans, but I'm a sucker, pun intended, for the vampire aesthetic. Plus, it reflects his character arc of becoming colder and more violent towards everything that isn't Amy. His 1P is the attire of a Dark Lord, complete with a pointy cape, a high collar of doom, and armor shaped vaguely like bat wings. Despite these major changes, it's still a very gentlemanly design. His clothes have an ornate gold pattern, and he's wearing a cravat like his old 3P. His hair is now slicked back, and while I personally prefer his other styles, it's a good fit for this costume's overall vibe. Green is an unusual choice for a vampire, but it's red's complementary color, so it works well, and it makes Raphael more unique. 9 out of 10. His 2P gives him a mysterious swashbuckler look. It bears some similarities to his Soul Calibur 2 2P, but it has the color palette of his Soul Calibur 2 1P as well as an open shirt. He's also wearing a mask, which is a cool idea in theory, but I'm not a fan of the asymmetrical design they went with. It'd be one thing if it was simply mirrored vertically on either side, but the shape's not quite right for that, and the pattern on the inside is totally different. It just seems awkward and imbalanced, but not in an intentional way like Nightmare's arm. Setting the mask aside, there's not much that makes this costume stand out. There's concept art showing him with a big feathered hat, which would have been a welcome addition. As is, it's a 5 out of 10. 
His Soul Calibur 4 1P leans even harder into the gothic vampire aesthetic. Almost all of the color has been drained from his palette. Much like the blood from his victims, ha ha ha. And the bat motif hinted at in Soul Calibur 3 has now been made explicit. His clothing is bulky and multi-layered, reminding me of Castlevania's take on the fashionable undead. Like most of Soul Calibur 4's designs, it's busy and over the top, but I think that's perfect for Raphael. What's the point of being a vampire lord if you're not going to be extra about it? Something I especially like about this costume is that his lion and sword crest from Soul Calibur 2 has made a comeback. Though he's almost unrecognizable as the same man from his debut appearance, he clings on to a small remnant of his past. If you couldn't tell from me getting all English majory on it, I really like this outfit. 10 out of 10. His 2P is the same as his Soul Calibur 3 2P. Since I don't take graphical improvements into account, the same score applies. In Soul Calibur 5, his 1P hasn't undergone as much of a change as in the previous games. His outfit is a little less fancy and seemingly takes inspiration from Vampire Hunter D. Along with the obvious addition of a brimmed hat, his silhouette is considerably slimmer, and his palette is more colorful. According to an artist's note, the original plan was to give him a tattered, world-weary look, but they decided against it since nobility is such an important part of his character. I get that to a certain extent, but this game takes place after a 17-year time skip during which Amy has gone missing. It would have made perfect sense for him to have abandoned his fancy pants persona. Even if they didn't want to change his clothes, they could have made his body more haggard. He could have long, unkempt hair and dark circles under his eyes. Wait a minute, I'm just describing myself. 8 out of 10. His 2P takes the bat imagery to an extreme. This is nothing novel for a vampire character, but I love how completely and thoroughly it commits to that concept. Everything he's wearing is shaped like a bat or a bat wing, ranging from obvious examples like his collar and lapels to subtle details like the pattern on his sleeves and boots. The longer you look at it, the more bats you see. The red and purple palette is familiar ground for Raphael, but the colors are darker and less saturated, which better fits the mysterious creature of the night. Fun fact, an artist's note for this costume describes Raphael as a deviant weirdo. I don't have anything to add to that, I just think it's hilarious. 9 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 is a reboot of the series, so Raphael is back to his garlic-enjoying self. He's once again sporting a cravat, which is complemented by the frills at the top of his gloves and boots, and there's a recurring fleur de motif that ties into his French heritage. My favorite thing about this costume is his stylish shoulder cape, which features his family crest in a color that actually stands out from the background. Shocking, I know. His glasses have a lot of haters, and I was among them at first, but they've started to grow on me. I still think they're too complex and look more like some weird mask than a pair of glasses, but they're a unique accessory that contribute to his sophisticated aura. 7 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 doesn't have any alternate costumes, but it does have alternate colors. His color 2 is green, orange, and black, which could be a reference to his Soul Calibur 3 1P if you squint hard enough. It looks alright, but I definitely prefer the shirt in white. 6 out of 10. His color 3 is pink and white, and it removes his glasses. I think pink could work as an accent color, but there's just so much of it here, and no other colors to balance it out. Dude looks like the Easter Bunny. 5 out of 10. Lastly, his color 4 is black and red with silver hair, and it too removes his glasses. This is my personal favorite, but objectively speaking, the palette offers little variety. It's difficult to appreciate the details of his clothing when they're all black. 7 out of 10. And with that, we have ranked every single Raphael costume. He has some of my favorite character designs in the series, and I really enjoyed tracking his transformation over the years. Fighting game characters tend to either be totally static or have big, sudden reworks that come out of nowhere, but Raphael changed in what feels like a very natural way. But that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. For episode 16, we'll be discussing Jin from Tekken, as requested by Sean Mundawarara. Sorry if I mispronounced that. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.